I don't usually do reviews of movies that have just come out because I'm a smaller channel, I'm a smaller podcast, and a lot more well-known channels devote you know their entire channel or or podcast to that just to reviewing movies. And so those channels are going to get they're going to soak up most of the views, most of the listens. Um and that's cool. There's more power to them. I understand like that's what they do. Um so I usually when I do reviews, most of the time I stick to more obscure kind of um movies that are somewhere and I want to talk about that. But today's a little different. Okay. This movie actually kind of struck a chord, kind of stuck out to me, and I just really want to talk about it, regardless of how many people listen. I just got a lot on my mind about it. So, um, so, something I realized in the past few years, as I'm getting older, when I'm watching films, I prefer story over action, and that's like, that's like a marked change in my life. That's like, you know, I've always been about the action films, right? And sci-fi and adventure and, uh, you know, um, fantasy, stuff like that. And, and I still love those films. I do. Uh, but I find myself more and more drawn towards the story in those films. And if it's an action film that doesn't have a good story, I don't give a shit about it. Whereas before, I'd just be like, action, yes, right? But now I'm like, yeah, but the, it got boring, you know? Obey action is uh, all day long. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm finding that about myself. Now I still enjoy my comic book films. Okay. I believe I'll probably love those until the day I day, uh, day I die. But even with those, the story to me is more intriguing than actually, you know, all the action sequences. So as I've gotten older, I've kind of, I found that like deeper stories pique my interest more. Sometimes even like very dark stories. Um, also same thing with literature. Like I'm, I'm much more into like Stephen King and stuff than I used to be, um, as a younger man, 35 now. And now I, I just care more about the substance of stuff. I don't know. It, it, it's not just about all the action and heroics to me. It's more about like, you know, diving into the human mind or, um, you know, just a story, man, a story, a good story. Will beat out an action flick to me any day of the week. Anyway, they're just more stimulating than than straight action packed films. So this brings us to The Devil All the Time, which is the movie I want to talk about today. And like I said, it just came out this week. A lot of buzz around it. A lot of people talking about it. It was number one Netflix. I think that like bigger channels are going to eat this up, and not a whole lot of people will probably hear this. But I want to give my two cents. So. Going in, all I knew is that Tom Holland was in it, and that I really liked Tom Holland as Spider-Man, so I was going to give it a shot. I had no real expectations, but I knew it wasn't going to be anything like, you know, an MCU film. So I had no real expectations going in. Uh, I didn't know the plot. I didn't know who else was starring in it. I just knew Tom Holland was in it. It's a Netflix film. You know, it looks dramatic. Let's go. I didn't even watch the, the trailer before I watched it. I had no idea what it was about. So I love this film. I absolutely loved it. I'm not sure how it has a 7.2 IMDb score and a 62% on Rotten Tomatoes. Like I would have guessed it would score way higher. I personally would have scored it way higher. Uh, maybe it's only going to be appreciated by a certain segment of people, you know. And that's okay. It's like to each their own. But I thought it was awesome. I thought it was amazing. Let me say though, if you are currently in a state of depression, this might not be the film for you. Like it is dark and it is sad. And at some points it's even jarring. Like there's some points of this film, you're going to be watching it and you're going to be like, oh, God damn it. Like you're going to be like, shit. You know, Jesus Christ, I did, oh man. Um, but it's so damn good. It's really rich storytelling. So basically, it is how a couple people become intertwined in their, almost like a 
Pulp Fiction, how like there's all these different stories going on and somehow they're all kind of connected to them. But this one is really just two groups of people and two generations. So you get the story of a father and then you basically get the story of his son. Like his father and the stuff that went on around him and then the son and, and stuff that went around at home. It, it spans about probably 40 years maybe. And I really love this type of storytelling. Like where, where it's generational. It, it, this movie actually... You know what? It reminds me of another really awesome but like kind of slept on film uh, called A Place Beyond the Pines. Like, man, if you haven't if you haven't seen A Place Beyond the Pines, you, you should see it. Um, if you haven't seen it and you have seen this and you liked this, go back and watch A Place Beyond the Pines. And if you've seen A Place Beyond the Pines and you love it, then you need to watch devil all the time you you'll know what i mean if you're a fan of either of the films and you go watch the other one you'll know exactly what i'm saying similar similar feel similar way of storytelling it, it's just really good anyway um so there's some really great performances in this movie like not not just tom holland but but also by uh bill skarsgård who plays his father who he was also he was awesome in another um another series i watched uh recently what was it on though i don't remember it was on hulu um the stephen king series was called man i don't know but mark bernardin was a writer on it and he was awesome in that like he was creepy as hell as that but he plays um the father of tom holland in this movie and he's awesome he's absolutely awesome and then one of the best performances here is Robert Pattinson as the, uh, okay, I don't, if you haven't watched it yet, I don't want to give too much away. I don't want to give things away. Um, but let's just say he plays a preacher and he does a, an amazing job. Like what a performance, dude. I, I can't wait to see this dude as Bruce Wayne next year. Holy shit. Like he, he's an actor that a lot of people give a lot of praise, but he's never, He's never in really big movies. He's in like smaller budget indie films and stuff like that. He chooses his roles, you know, very artistically. And I'll be honest, I've kind of slept on him until now. But now I'm like very interested in watching some of his other films. Like like I said, a lot of them are kind of obscure or indie films. They're not always in in the movie theater. Uh, but I'm going to seek him out now because this guy's he's got some serious acting chops. But I say all that about Robert Pattinson to say this, don't sleep on Tom Holland. He is not a one-note actor. He's awesome in this. And I haven't I haven't really seen him in anything else, but this is this has made me a true believer. Okay. A lot of people in the like reviews that I was seeing was saying that Robert Pattinson like overshadowed him. Um I, I don't see that at all. At all. I'm I'm all in with Tom Holland. Tom Holland is a legitimate actor, at least based on this film. I think he's great. So the movie had like an intricate story spanning several decades and bringing together a ton of characters. And it like intertwines their lives into one awesome fucking story. Now, <clears throat> now I really want to dive into, um, there's a book. So this is actually based on a novel, and I didn't even know that until after the film was over. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, most great films, <laughs> most films that uh, have great writing were originally based on a novel that was fantastic. So um, I'm definitely going to seek out that book because as, as awesome as this movie is, a film almost never compares to the book. It's like I was talking about with Stephen King earlier. Like Stephen King's books are far better than any Stephen King movie. I'm I'm sure there's stuff that like didn't make it into the film, you know, stuff that might even add m even more richness to these characters that like I genuinely cared about by the end of the movie. So, I got I got to say I would give this movie probably a, a, at least at least a uh, 8.5 to 9 out of 10. Like these these critics are insane. These critics are way off on this film. But, I mean, maybe it's just for, like I said, maybe it's for people like me who like this type of storytelling, who like this type of film. Um, but 
yeah, my personal opinion, critics are way off. I think I think it's really good, really good. Highly recommend. Anyway, if you like uh, if you like podcasts like this, where I pick a subject each day, I pick a random topic and I talk about it. And sometimes it's movie movie reviews like this, and sometimes it's entertainment news or pop culture, and sometimes it's just a crazy story that happened to me. Um, but if you're into that sort of thing, that's what I do here. I do every day. I pick a random topic to talk about and I just rant about it. So if you're into that sort of thing, subscribe for more, follow the podcast, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, go over, just search Brett Scott on YouTube. And if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please, uh, go follow my podcast. It's called Brett Scott daily. And like I said, I post every day. So if you decide to subscribe, if you decide to favorite and follow, then I will talk to you again tomorrow. Thanks.